welcome to another video. If you don't know me, my name's Mark. I'm a Porsche Cayman owner and I also lease a BMW i3s. Today is my 697th day of owning this car. I'm just going to round up the auto solar that I competed in recently and share with you some of the things I've learned about auto solos and about this car. I tried something different for this auto solo and that I went for a square tyre setup. So how did I do that? Well, I've got the um, Cayman 17 inch wheels on the back, but the 18 inch wheels on the front. So that gave me a nice 235 section 18 on the front and a 235 section on the back. And the intention was to give it a bit more front end and a bit of a looser rear end. Give it a bit more oversteer, give it a bit more directness at the front. And I achieved that. The final result of the day was that I actually came second out of all 50 entrants. I came second to Ian in his Alpine A110. Now I know on the day, on the last video, uh, I mentioned that Rod in his Tesla won overall. Well, he was given the bottle of champagne and he did win on the day. But when they sent the data through and I analysed it, their spreadsheet skills still aren't quite there. Um, I know from personal experience where I was given a bottle of champagne and I didn't in fact win it because they'd uh, put the same time on one of the shorter courses against one of the longer courses as well. They'd done something similar on Rod's times. Something I learned about auto solos this time around that I'd never really given a thought to in the past was that I was in the last group, um, the last to run. You're in groups, they go out one after the other, and I was in the last group. And that meant that each time I got to the course, there'd already been numerous cars go through it, cleaning it up already, which is a good thing because we use the runoff areas on a couple of the corners at the circuit. They don't get much use, they get mossy, they get dirty. But by the time I got to it, they were nice and clean. On each of my fastest runs, there was barely any oversteer at all. I got much better um, pull aways from the start and also from the hard stop halfway down each course. If you want to see uh, a link to each of my four fastest runs, I'll stick a link up there in the corner of the video. And you'll see that there wasn't much movement. It doesn't actually look fast, but they were my fastest runs. I think I can claim to be the most consistent competitor as well. The uh, video that I linked to earlier, which shows the fastest run that I did on each course, at the end of each of those runs, it shows the top five fastest times from the five fastest competitors on each course. And I was the only person to place in the top five of every single course. Something that really became apparent on this auto solo was how much the limiter limits this car and its performance on the auto solo. Second gear has no torque, it doesn't really have any balls until about four and a half thousand RPM and you don't get up to those speeds on an auto solo. So it was first gear all of the time. So I spent an awful lot of time banging this thing off the limiter. A question that arose in the comments was about the potential damage you do if you're banging your car off the limiter like I was. But the point is, a limiter is actually a safety feature. I'll put a link um, to a video I made on it up there. You're not doing any harm to your car. The limiter stops you over revving the engine. It will register on the over rev log, but no one cares about that. Porsche don't care about that. Porsche will still give this car a warranty if it qualified, it's too old now. But the over rev records on this car would not stop Porsche giving this engine a warranty. So I came second overall behind Ian. If I didn't get any penalties, I would only have been 0.93 seconds off of his uh, time. So as I mentioned, accuracy is everything. Of course, that is a bit of a moot point because of course, if I took my penalties out of the equation, really to be fair, I'd have to allow Ian to take his out as well. No damage. Uh, yeah, I'd have to let Ian take his penalties out as well, and then of course he'd be much, much faster. So I had a huge amount of fun sliding this thing around. That's not fast, of course, and that you know came through in the times. Uh, but it's it's yeah, you get an opportunity on these auto solos to just have a play. It's like your own private playground. No one's going to tell you off. You won't be competitive if you slide it, but oh, it's so much fun. And I may have been consistent, but when I look back at the footage, I wasn't that fast. The times when I was fastest, 
it looked like I wasn't really trying. So for the future, I need to be smoother, I need to keep the car balanced, and I need to dial my efforts and dial my inputs down a bit. In the 30 or so seconds that I'm about to show you, you'll see me having a huge amount of fun, but not being particularly fast. a win in this car. There needs to be, because I still owe petrol ped a bottle of champagne from that first ever auto solo I did. I've done six of these now by the way and I'm going to keep doing for as long, doing them for as long as I can. Uh, that first ever one I did in my M140i when they gave me the overall win on the day and I got the bottle of champagne, spreadsheet errors, it was really uh, Peter or petrol ped who won it. So I owe him a bottle of champagne. That's it for this one. Please give it the mandatory thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate that if you do. And I hope to see you soon in another video. Thank you very, very much for watching.